Hey guys, welcome to another EDH Deck Tech episode brought to you by the Command Valley. I'm your host Landon, and today's Deck Tech will be on Bruvac the Grandiloquent. If you're new here, we'd really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button. We release deck techs every Monday and we try to stay up to date building decks on all the new commanders coming out. So you don't want to miss out on all of our future deck techs that we're going to be releasing. I'd also like to shout out this channel's sponsor, Game Grid Lehigh. If you're in the Utah County area, you need to check out their store. They've got an awesome staff and an awesome card archive. They're always going to have the card that you need. All right, now let's dive into today's episode. Like I said, this deck is going to be on Bruvac the Grand Eloquent. He is a new legendary creature that's being printed in Jumpstart. He is a legendary creature human advisor, and he reads, If an opponent would mill one or more cards, they mill twice that many cards instead. And, to mill a card, a player puts the top card of their library into their graveyard. So, Wizards has decided to put mill or make mill a keyword on cards now, which... Basically, players for the longest time had just been calling it Mill. It comes from a really, really, really old artifact called Millstone that essentially does the same thing. It takes cards from the top of your opponent's library and puts it into their graveyard. This is a viable strategy because when your opponents run out of cards in their library and they go to draw, they will subsequently lose the game. So the goal of this deck is to mill all of the cards in all of our opponent's libraries out into their graveyard. And Bruvec doubles all of our mill abilities. So if we've got a card that says target opponent mills five, they're going to mill 10. So the strategy of this deck is very straightforward. It's very simple. We are playing a ton of different cards that mill out our opponents. The one problem with mill is normally the mill cards are created and designed in a 60 card format, you know, in modern or in standard or other formats besides commander. So all these cards are designed with a 60 card deck in mind. So a lot of these cards in commander aren't as efficient because we have three opponents each with 100 cards starting and well, 99 technically, but by the time they draw their cards and draw cards throughout the game, it'll be a little bit less than 100 on average per player, but I'm just averaging it out to 100. So with that being said, I've included as many repeatable mill effects as I can put into this deck, and we're playing a lot of mill cards that trigger off of draw, so we're playing a lot of draw spells too. As with any strategy in Commander, we need to start off with the ramp, because we want to make sure that we can cast Bruvac as quickly as possible and start the strategy. So we're playing a bunch of mana rocks since we don't have access to green, so we're playing Arcane Signet which for two mana can tap for a blue in our deck. Everflowing Chalice, which however much mana we dump into that kicker, we get half back out. We've got Felwar Stone. We've got Sky Diamond, Soul Ring, Star Compass, Wayfarer's Bobble, which can put us a land into play, and War Power Stone, which does enter tap, but it can tap for two mana. And we're also playing High Tide because we're playing a lot of islands, so I try and jam High Tide in almost any mono blue deck. It can give us some super crazy turns. It For one mana, at instant speed makes all of our islands tap for double mana. Super good. So before we get into all of the mill stuff, I'd like to go over just the removals, the counter spells, just that package, the ways we have of interacting with our opponents, because some of that will set context for the other cards in the deck. So we've got Rapid Hybridization and Pongify, which essentially are the same card for one blue mana at instant speed. We can destroy any creature and replace it with a weaker token version of that creature. We've got Reality Shift, which for one and a blue instant speed, we can exile any creature and the owner of that creature puts the top card of the library into play and it's a 2-2 it's called manifesting super good removal spell i love it we've got negate and counter spell which are just super solid counter spells that can protect our commander we can stop somebody from going off super versatile cards then we've got countermand which is really good in this deck it's a counter spell and the owner of the spell that we're countering has to mill four cards so with bruvac out they're going to end up milling eight and hopefully we can hit some super juicy cards with that we then got Archmage's Charm, which I really like the flexibility on this card. It has three different modes. We can either counter a spell, make a player draw two cards, or gain control of target non land permanent with converted mana cost one or less. So we can take a Soul Ring, we can take a Mana Crypt, we can take anything that costs one or less. Super Fringe, most of the time we're going to want to be countering a spell or drawing a card. Again, it doesn't do any of these things super efficiently, but since it has all those modes on there, I really like this spell and I think it fits really well in a mono blue deck. As for clearing up the board, we've got Evacuation, which is going to return all creatures to their owner's hand at instant speed. We're not playing a whole bunch of creatures, and our strategy isn't really based around creatures, so this doesn't affect us too much, and Bruvac only costs 3 mana, so only having to deploy him from our hand again for 3 mana, not a super huge deal. We are then playing Aether Spouts, which at instant speed can put all attacking creatures on top or on bottom of their owner's library, which is honestly super cool this goes one step further than fogging the combat it basically removes all the threats and puts them really far away 
And then finally, we've got Engulf the Shore, instant speed for 4 mana, we get to return to their owner's hands all creatures with toughness less than or equal to the number of islands you control. So, we've got only islands in the deck, um, so the likelihood of this hitting everything on the board is pretty high. Finally, the last board wipe we're playing is Aetherize. It's very similar to Aether Spouts. At instant speed, we can return all attacking creatures to their owner's hands. I like this a lot more than Fog Effects. It bounces everything back to our opponent's hands. They have to recast it, and if they've got a bunch of tokens, it's just going to destroy all the tokens. All right, before we get into the mill strategy, I'd like to just go over the card draw spells because some of our mill permanents actually trigger off of us drawing. So I'm gonna go over the draw spells first. So first up for our draw cards, we have Blue Sun Zenith. For X, blue, blue, blue at instant speed, target player draws X cards and then we shuffle Blue Sun Zenith back into our library. This is just an awesome card and it will end up, and it is very cool with some of the other cards in the deck. Similarly, we have Pull From Tomorrow, which at instant speed in X blue blue, we draw X cards and then discard one card. Super efficient, like Blue Sun Zenith, this can draw us a ton of cards. We then have Into the Story, which costs a whopping five blue blue instant speed, but it costs three generic less to cast if an opponent has seven or more cards in their graveyard, and we can draw four cards. It is not difficult at all for us to get an opponent with seven cards in their graveyard. We could do that in a turn, so. Super good card in the deck. We then have Frantic Search, which at instant speed lets us draw two cards and then discard two cards, and we can untap three lands. So this is basically a free draw two, discard two. We then have Brainstorm, which for one blue mana instant speed, we can draw three cards and then put two back from our hand on top of our library. Technically, we're not netting any extra cards in our hand, but we are looking for that draw trigger. That draw card is very important. We're then playing Jace's Archivist, which is amazing in the deck, probably one of the best cards in the context of what we're trying to do. We can pay one blue mana and tap him, and each player discards his or her hand and then draws cards equal to the greatest number of cards a player discarded this way. So if we've already drawn a bunch of cards this turn and maybe we have 10, 15 cards in our hand and we activate Jace's Archivist, which is a windfall on a stick, it's not impossible that we could actually mill our opponents out with how many cards we're going to be milling from our opponent's decks. We're then playing Treasure Cruise, which again is a very expensive draw spell, 7 and a blue, but it has Delve, so we can exile cards from our graveyard to pay for that generic mana, and we draw 3 cards, which is very, very, very powerful. So one of the best card draw spells we have in the deck is a legendary artifact from Throne of Eldraine called the Magic Mirror. For 6 blue blue blue, we have a legendary artifact that costs 1 less to cast for each instant and sorcery card in our graveyard, so this can cost as little as 3 blue mana. At the beginning of our upkeep, we can put a knowledge counter on the Magic Mirror, and then we draw a card equal to the number of knowledge counters on the Magic Mirror. So, we get 1 card, and then 2 cards, 3 cards, 4 cards, hopefully 7 or 8 cards by the time... The game is over. This is a super cool card draw spell and I've been looking for a deck to put it in and I think it fits in really well into this deck specifically. All right, let's get into the one-off mill effects that we have. So we've got Tome Scour, which for one blue mana makes target player mill the top five cards of their library. So with Bruvac out, we only have to spend one blue mana to mill somebody for 10. That's pretty good. We then have Mind Sculpt. For one and a blue target opponent mills seven. So with Bruvac out, they're gonna be milling 14. I look at both of these cards kind of as flex cards. If you feel like in your meta you need an extra board wipe or some extra removal or counter spells, I think that these are, are pretty good cards to take out. Or maybe you want a tutor for a very specific card that I'm going to talk about in a minute. This is all. These are also good cards to start with if you're looking for cards to take out. We're then playing Traumatize, which is very, very, very good with Bruvac for three and two blue at sorcery speed target player puts the top half of his or her library into their graveyard so with bruvac out they will mill their entire library so like i was saying earlier if you have the budget for maybe a mystical tutor or maybe some other tutors this would be the card that we're looking for we then have tunnel vision which is a kind of complicated card it says name a card target player reveals cards from the top of his or her library until the named card is revealed if it is, that player puts the rest of the revealed cards into his or her library and puts the named card on top of his or her library. Otherwise, the player shuffles his or her library. So this can be either really good or really bad. Either we can get really lucky and name a card that's super low down in our opponent's deck and they're going to mill a ton of cards, or they're going to hit something super early on and they're going to get a card. More often than not, I think we're going to mill a lot of cards with this. 
We're then playing Dreadwaters, which for three and a blue, target player mills X cards of his or her library where X is the number of lands we control. So I think that this is a super good card late game. If we've got 10, 15 lands, this could be 30 cards if we've got Bruvac out. So that's really good at maybe getting rid of the rest of the cards in an opponent's library. We're then playing Sanity Grinding, which is a super cool card from Lorwyn. It costs blue, 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 and it has a really weird mechanic called Chroma, which means we reveal the top 10 cards of our library, and for each blue mana symbol and the mana costs of the revealed cards, target opponent mills the top card of their library. Then put the cards you revealed this way on the bottom of our library in any order. So, in the top 10 cards, our devotion to blue is how many cards our opponents are going to mill. We've got a ton of blue symbols in our library, and it's not impossible that we hit maybe six or seven symbols in the top 10 cards, and we can mill an opponent for a lot. We've then got Increasing Confusion, which is really, really, really cool with Bruvac. It's X in a blue, target player mills the top X cards of their library. If Increasing Confusion was cast from a graveyard, that player puts twice that many cards from his or her graveyard instead, and it has a flashback cost of X in a blue, so we can cast it from our hand, and then cast it from our graveyard, and we're going to be doubling, even tripling how many cards our opponents are going to be milling. We then have Psychic Spiral, which at instant speed, we can shuffle all the cards from our graveyard back into our library, and target player is going to mill that many cards. So if we've got a ton of cards in our graveyard, maybe we need to see some of those cards again, we can shuffle them back into our library and mill our opponents for a ton. So those are all of our one-off mill effects. Let's go over the mill engines or ways we have of milling lots of cards over the course of the game. So starting off, we'll go over the enchantment. So we've got Curse of the Bloody Tome, which is a curse. So we enchant one of our opponents. And at the beginning of the enchanted player's upkeep, that player mills two. So milling four every turn could really throw a wrench in our opponent's plans. We then have Drowned Secrets, which for one and a blue, whenever we cast a blue spell, target player mills the top two cards of their library. We then have Fraying Sanity, which is another curse. At the beginning of each end step of the cursed player, that player mills the X cards of their library, where X is the number of cards put into that graveyard from anywhere this turn. So this is going to punish our opponents for casting spells, for having things die, for us milling them on top of that. This, could be, this gets really brutal really fast for the player that we enchant. We then have Jace's Erasure, which says whenever we draw a card, we may have target player put the top card of their library into their graveyard. So with the context of how many cards we can draw, this enchantment and some of the other ones we're going to talk about can get out of hand really fast. We then have Memory Erosion, which whenever an opponent casts a spell, that player is going to mill two cards from their library. So this is going to punish our opponents for casting spells. We then have Psychic Corrosion, which says whenever we draw a card, each opponent mills the top two cards of their library. This is really good because most of our mill effects will only hit one player. They say target or we have to choose whenever the trigger happens. So this hitting each of our opponents is super good in the deck and it's really important for us to find this card. Along that same vein, we have Sphinx's tutelage, which says, whenever you draw a card, target opponent puts the top two cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard. If they're both non-land cards that share a color, repeat this process. Although this has to target an opponent, this effect is so powerful. This starts to get out of hand, especially if our opponents are playing a monocolored deck. It's not impossible for us to mill an opponent out in a single turn if we maybe put six into a blue sun zenith or into pull from tomorrow, or maybe we activate Jace's Archivist with a ton of cards in our hand. I mean, this could just end a couple players in one turn. We then have Teferi's Tutelage, which when it enters the battlefield, we draw a card and discard a card. And whenever we draw a card, target opponent mills too. So again, whenever we draw a card, we're going to start milling opponents, and that's really powerful. Moving over into the creatures, we have Dreamborn Muse, which at the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player mills X, where X is the number of cards in their hand. So this punishes our opponents for having a lot of cards in their hand. We then have Fleet Swallower, which is a massive, massive, massive fish, which basically has the text of Traumatize on it. Whenever it attacks, target player mills half their library. So with Bruvac out, every time this thing attacks, somebody is losing their library. We then have Hedron Crab, which is a very efficient little guy. Only costing one blue mana is super nice, and it has landfall. So whenever a land enters a battlefield under our control, target opponent is going to mill three. So basically milling an opponent for six if we have Bruvac out for just playing lands is amazing. Next up we have Jace's Mind Seeker, which when it enters the battlefield, target opponent puts the top five cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard. You may cast an instant or sorcery card from among them without paying its mana cost. So with Bruvac out, we're digging even deeper into an opponent's library, maybe finding a very powerful spell among them to cast. We then have Maniac Scribe, which when it enters the battlefield, each opponent mills three. 
And then it has Delirium, which says, at the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, if there are four or more card types among cards in our graveyard, that player mills three. So this can hit each of our opponents on each of their turns, which is super efficient. We then have Riddle Keeper, which whenever a creature attacks us or a Planeswalker we control, if that creature's controller mills the top two cards of their library. So this scales. It doesn't say whenever one or more, it says whenever a creature attacks us. So if our opponents swing at us with multiple creatures, they're going to mill a ton of cards from their library. Next up, we have a card that I'm really excited about playing. I've never seen it before. I think it's super cool. It's Selhof Occultist. Whenever Selhof Occultist or another creature dies, target player mills one. So if there are a bunch of creatures on the table and a board wipe happens, there are a lot of cards that are going to be milled from our opponent's libraries. We've also got a couple of artifacts they're going to mill our opponents out. Starting off, we have Folio of Fancies that says players have no maximum hand size. It then has an activated ability that says XX, each player draws X cards. It has another activated ability that says two in a blue and tap. Each opponent puts a number of cards equal to the number of cards in their hand from the top of their library into their graveyard. So our opponents are going to mill equal to the number of cards in their hand. This is a super powerful effect and it's going to get out of hand pretty quick for our opponents. We then have Keening Stone, which is a super big artifact at costing 6 mana, and it has a hefty costing ability that costs 5 and tap. Target player mills X, where X is the number of cards in that player's graveyard. So this can really punish our opponents for having a bunch of cards in their graveyard, and we're going to be fueling that by milling them throughout the game, so it's not impossible for this to mill 20 or 30 cards from our opponents at once. We're then playing Mind Crank, which says whenever an opponent loses life, that player mills that many cards. So we could, with this out on the table, we can have our other opponents cause our other opponents to be milling cards, because if they get hit by our other creature's opponents, they're gonna have to mill for that, which I think is super awesome. And finally, we have Undead Alchemist. It is a zombie that costs three and a blue, and he reads, if a zombie you control deal combat damage to a player, instead that player puts that many cards from the top of his or her library into the graveyard, so they're gonna mill that many cards instead. And whenever a creature card is put into an opponent's graveyard from his or her library, exile that card and put a 2-2 black zombie creature token onto the battlefield. So not only is this going to mill our opponents out, but we can create a ton of creature tokens because he doesn't care if he's the one or if a zombie is the one that's hitting our opponents making them mill. He just cares about whenever a creature card is put into an opponent's graveyard from his or her library. So if we have our other mill effects in play, we're going to be making a ton of tokens. All right, so we've gone over the different ways we have in our deck of milling and the different ways we have of drawing. There's still one more category I want to talk about, and that's just some extra value, some added synergy. Um, we've got our Kaomancer. The deck wants to cast a lot of instants and sorceries, so being able to return them back to our hand when this enters the battlefield is really important. We then have Body Double, which when it enters a battlefield, we can have it become a copy of any creature in the graveyard. With how many cards we're going to be making our opponents mill, there's going to be some juicy targets for this to become a copy of. We also have Jace's Phantasm, which I'd feel remiss if we didn't put this in here flavorfully too. For one blue mana, it's a simple illusion with flying, it's a 1-1, but as long as an opponent has 10 or more cards in their graveyard, it's going to get plus 4, plus 4, which is really nice. We're then playing Sakashima the Imposter and Spark Double. Essentially, these serve the same purpose. When they enter the battlefield, we can choose to have them enter a copy of any other creature, and the legend rule won't apply. So we could have extra copies of Bruvac, which is going to double and triple the amount of cards our opponents are going to be milling. We're then playing Jace Memory Adept, which I'd feel remiss if we were playing a mill deck and we didn't have some type of Jace Planeswalker. He enters with four loyalty counters and his plus one lets us draw a card and target player mills the top card of their library. His zero makes an, a player mill 10. And then his minus seven is any number of target players draw 20 cards. I doubt we'll, we will ever get him to seven because we're probably going to be activating his zero ability to mill people for 20 each time if we have our commander out, which is super cool. Next up, we have Bond of Insight. Each player is going to mill four cards from their library and we get to return up to two instants and or sorcery cards from our graveyard to our hand. So that's really nice. It can get back a traumatize. It can get back a blue. It can get back a pull from tomorrow or one of our other draw spells. It's really nice to have in the deck. And the last card we have is Primal Amulet. It's one of my favorite artifacts and I try to put it into as many decks as I can that want to cast a lot of instants and sorceries. And I kind of feel like this deck wants to be doing that as well. And it is an artifact that costs four mana and it says instant and sorcery spells you cast cost one less to cast. And whenever we cast an instant or sorcery spell, we can put a charge counter on it. And then if there are four or more charge counters, we can flip it over into Primal Wellspring and it can tap for a mana of any color. And when we spend that mana to cast an instant or sorcery spell, we can copy that spell. So if we 
cast Traumatize off of this, we get a copy Traumatize and completely mill out two of our opponents. And there are a bunch of other instants and sorceries that we want to be casting that are really nice if we can copy them. Another one is Spell Twine. For five and a blue at instant speed, we can exile an instant or sorcery from our graveyard and an instant or sorcery from an opponent's graveyard, and we can cast both of those spells. So copying Spell Twine with Primal Amulet would be awesome. All right, and now we just have to go over the mana base. We're playing 35 islands and one Mystic Sanctuary. When Mystic Sanctuary enters the battlefield, we can put an instant to sorcery back on top of our library. I feel like that's super important in our deck to get back Traumatize or any other really important spell that we need. Super nice to have. The mana base, super simple. We're playing mono blue. There are some other lands that can mill a little bit, but I decided to keep it simple and just play islands. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoy the deck. I was able to try the deck out and play test it a couple of times and I even got to play in one of our gameplay videos that we're going to be releasing and I found that this deck plays a lot like an aggro deck. You have to latch onto one player and kind of mill them out and take out one player at a time just because there aren't a whole lot of mill effects that mill each opponent at once. You, you kind of have to view the cards in their library as, an, as a pseudo life total. So once you start milling one opponent, it's just more efficient to stay with that opponent, finish them and start looking at the other players. So again, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoy our content and you want to see more of it, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you stay up to date with all of our videos. Thanks guys so much and have a great day.